If you learn Rambam in the Hilchas Beis Hamikdash, one of the sections of those halachas is Bias Hamikdash. Interesting. Uh, when a Kayan Gadol is allowed to go into the Beis Hamikdash, and when he's not allowed, and when the Kayan Gadol, the Kayan, the Kayan Gadol, and it's called Bias Hamikdash. And the similarities are quite interesting. Kayan Godel is not allowed to go, the Kayan is not allowed to go into the Beis Hamikdash if he had a few drinks. You're not allowed to be intimate with your wife if you had a few drinks. You can't come into the Beis Hamikdash with dirty begodim. What are dirty begodim? Selfish thoughts. Levushim are machshavat dibur amayzer. Anyway, the, the the comparisons are very strong. The best comparison is, or the best uh, <coughs> lesson, the Kayan Godl, if he had machshava machshava psula, what is it called? Huh? Machshava shchut. What is it? In the in the in the Kedush Hakadoshim, he would die. Some places it says that he would not live out the year. But I think it also said that he would die in the in the Kedush Hakadoshim, and they had to have a rope to schlep him out. So the Shaila is, what kind of machshava zara would a Kayan Godel have in Kedush Hakadoshim on Yom Kippur, when he's only there for? Uh, 15 minutes. It's such, he's it's such a nut mensch that he can't, you're doing something unusual only once a year. You're busy doing what you're doing. Where do, where do you get machshavas out of and, and it became so common that when the Kayan Godel did come out alive, it was a ganze simcha. What is that? Do you expect the average Kayan Godel to have Machshavah others, and you're surprised that he comes out alive? What's the reason that he can't marry an Almona? Isn't that because he's going to die in the Kedush HaKadosh for someone to die so he can marry his wife? That's, 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 real free. that's pretty <laughs> nasty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, because he's not supposed to think about Machshavah Zaras. So the whole time he walks in, he's like, no, I'm not going to think about it. I mean, he can't marry an Almanda because he has to marry a, a, a Psua. I believe it's Shaitan Could be. Yeah, Could no, be. Okay. Anyway, so what is this Machshavah Zara that he might have? If you, if you were to ask the Kayan Godel, are you... Uh, you're the guy who goes into the Kedush HaKadoshim. He would say, what are you talking about? Kedush HaKadoshim. Nobody goes. In. Kedush HaKadoshim means nobody goes there. And you say, well, but you're the exception. You go there. He says, Chas v'sholem. Nobody goes there. So you say to him, but uh, last week was Yom Kippur. Did you go in there? He says, yeah. And the year before? Yeah. And the year before? Yeah. So you're the guy who goes there. Chas Nobody goes there. This makes sense to a chosid. The Kohen Gadol is saying, Chas If I would think that I can go there for such a machshava, I would die. The Machshava Zara of Akain Godel wasn't he was thinking about food or even about his wife. Fifteen minutes. Come on, even an average person can concentrate for fifteen minutes when you're doing something unusual that you're not used to every day. The Machshava Zara would be I'm a Kayan Godel. I I come in here. No, you don't come in here. When you're called, you come, but this is not your place. 
So why, if you had a machshav azara, you would die? Seems a little harsh, no? Machshav azara is not punishable by death. If he was thinking about his wife, it would be fe, fe. You don't die for that. You're dying because Kedesh HaKadoshim cannot be cheapened. If you cheapen the Kedesh HaKadoshim, it doesn't work. How do you cheapen a Kedesh HaKadoshim? You start to feel like this is your place. The Emes, it's not your place. It's the Ebeshtes place. So it's very much like you invite somebody to your house. You want them to, to be there. You want them to feel comfortable. But if they start thinking that it's their house, you don't invite them back. Because now you're violating my privacy. So you, you, you invite somebody to stay in your house, and you find out that he sold the couch. He didn't like it. It didn't fit. He sold it. She says, excuse me. What are you doing? He says, well, you don't want me to feel comfortable? Yeah. I want you to feel very comfortable in my house, on my couch. When it starts being your couch, then I don't want you to be comfortable. You're not invited anymore. Because as long as you don't sell my couch, you're not violating my balabatishkeit. You're not violating the privacy. But when you start to think it's your house, now you're destroying my privacy. So the Kedesh HaKadoshim remains Kedesh HaKadoshim <coughs> because the Kayan Godel doesn't sell the furniture. He doesn't walk in saying, I'm back. <laughs> Hello, it's me. Who is you? This is Kedesh HaKadoshim. You don't belong here. So the result is, that even those Kehanim G'daylim in the second Beis HaMikdash who were not on the same level and knew that they might die were willing to do it. Because to be in Kedesh HaKadoshim was so awesome that they risked their lives. Why is it so awesome? Because imagine having a Kedusha that is too big for you to own. The fact that this is not your place makes the experience so much more intense and so much higher. You're in a place, it's way too holy for you, yet you were invited, and you have an Aveda to do there. It's like a double experience. It's a two-dimensional experience. The pleasure of being there and the pachad of being there. It's like gilu bir'oda. Whereas all other pleasures, if you like it, you like it. It's always one-dimensional. Kedesh HaKadoshim, the Kayan Godel going into Kedesh HaKadoshim, that's intimacy. Real intimacy is too holy for you. And that's why whatever you feel whatever edelkeit, whatever bitl you feel at that moment, it's not going to last. It's not you. It's interesting that the Shulchan Aruch says that after husband and wife have been intimate, you, uh, you wait up to a half hour, and then you go back to your bed. It's almost like you did your Aveda, now leave. This is not your place. That sensitivity, that's the kedusha of the of the to never feel like this is mine, I own it. I mean the intimacy. You don't own intimacy. It's like the Kedesh Akadosha. When there's an Aveda you need to do, you're invited. But don't start selling the furniture. Don't let it become like it could become. Yeah, she's there all the time, I see her all the time, what's the big deal? It's so dangerous.
there are many non-Jews who uh, want to go to the mikveh. Women. They push, they want to practice the whole thing. Two weeks separate, two weeks on. Why do they want to do it? To save their marriage. We don't realize <coughs> what a powerful, positive thing The Rabbanim are going through all sorts of, you know, should you let women go to the mikveh, they're not Jewish. They'll see the bracha on the wall, they'll want to make a bracha. <laughs> all sorts of shaylas. But, but they want. I have no doubt when Mashiach comes, everybody's going to keep mikveh. But it's normal. It, it makes so much sense. It's so necessary for, for, for simple, practical, real life in Olam Hazah. 